Hello and welcome to another video from UCSGuru.com. My name is Colin Lynch and this video will continue on from the Hyperflex cluster installation video um, previously recorded and so in this video we'll be expanding that cluster from five converged nodes to six nodes. And now this is a fairly automated wizard driven process but in order to ensure a successful expansion uh, my main tips would be always uh, read the cluster expansion section in the admin guide for the version of your Hyperflex cluster. Uh, ensure the installer VM you're going to use matches your uh, Hyperflex cluster version. Uh, don't skip any prerequisite, prerequisite checks or validations and ensure any names uh, you're going to use during the um, installer wizard are resolvable in DNS and that you have a um, valid time uh, source available. OK, so let's go and have a look at the Hyperflex environment we're going to expand. So we look in HX Connect. So go into our dashboard. Just make sure our cluster is currently healthy. So you can see there that we currently have a five node cluster. should be online okay yeah so nodes ajax node one to five and again we can have a look at the same cluster in vSphere so we have our cluster there our hx cluster nodes one to five and we have a look at our hx plugin we should see the same information there from the vCenter point of view again five node cluster for the capacity information right okay so let's go and have a look at the node we're going to add in so if you remember our trusty hyperflex spreadsheet from our installation video We'll add in our new node. So there are our current five nodes in our Hyperflex cluster, and this is the node we're going to add in. So a converged node, which means its uh, local storage will be added to the uh, cluster storage, as opposed to a compute-only node. So we're going to add that in. We're going to use the same uh, format for our IP addressing. So one, two, three, four, five IP addresses required. Uh, to in the management network, to in the storage network, and the vMotion network. Okay, and then the information that we're going to require um, during the course of the cluster expansion. So we'll be asked for our installer OVA. Uh, again, that must match the version of the Hyperflex cluster you're um, expanding. So if you've upgraded since uh, we've installed, you'll need to up, uh, just download a a uh, matching version installer OVA. Um, again, we'll just need things like the HX uh, cluster name. So again, fill all the information in here. Uh, your vCenter details, your UCS details, uh, and of course your DNS and your NTP. Okay. So again, so that um, node six, the new node you're adding, must uh, be the same. Uh, model number, i.e. the HX220 uh, in this case, and uh, needs the same disk configuration. So again, all the prereqs in the cluster expansion document, uh, which I'll provide a link for in this video, will we'll take you through all these prereq checks. And again, important, don't skip any of the, uh, the prereq checks. So let's have a look at our UCS environment. So there are our current uh, five node clusters with our server number six so if we have a look at our current servers so you'll see our first five have all got a service profile associated so one to five and then this fellow here number six is just sitting there currently unassociated so no association there's no service profile for it so all i've had to do to get to this stage is we've racked our HX node and uh, we've cabled it up 
to our Fabric Interconnect as per all the other five nodes. And all we've done at this stage is just um, turned on the Fabric Interconnect port as a server port to allow the discovery to happen. So again, if you go into equipment, uh, if you go into the fixed module, so there's our six Hyperflex nodes. And so all I've done is onto port six and configure as a server port on both Fabric Interconnects. So once your server has been discovered and it's showing up in UCS Manager, that's as much as you need to do in UCS. Everything else will be done through the um, installer VM, which essentially uses um, Ansible backend to do all this configuration for you. So let's go to our installer. So again, this is pretty much freshly downloaded. Uh, so it's a uh, root and the default password is Cisco with a capital C, one, two, three. Okay. So it's just telling our cluster has been discovered and is healthy. So we want to Go to the main front screen and we want to expand the cluster. So we want to expand the standard cluster. Okay, so this is when our spreadsheet comes in handy again. So our UCS manager host name. Uh, so again, can't emphasize enough how important DNS is. If you're using um, DNS names and host names, uh, they all need to be resolved. So again, all worth checking that all your names resolve to DNS plus also the name of your new node. Make sure you've got a, you know, a, a, a record in for your new node and you can ping it via its host name. Okay, so I'll just copy and paste these in. So our UCS is hxucssdnlab.com Our username is admin Our hypervisor credentials So this is going to be the hypervisor credentials of the new Hyperflex node which currently is at factory default So that password should be Cisco123 with a capital C Our vCenter is uh, this one Hyperflex vCenter, administrator at vSphere.local, our password. Okay, so I think that's all filled in. We can progress. Okay, so select a cluster to expand. If it doesn't uh, detect a cluster to expand, just uh, put in your management IP address here and it will go away and find that. So again, online and healthy. So we shall continue. So now it's logging into the UCS manager and it's going to try and discover our unassociated server. Okay, so that is, uh, that is, so it's got five associated, uh, which are our active nodes, and then one unassociated node. Uh, yeah, we're not using the availability zones, so we don't need to worry about that. So if I was expanding this by multiple nodes at the same time, it would detect those as well, and I'll just make sure all my boxes are ticked. So we are just ticking that one node. Let's progress. Okay, so this again this is where our spreadsheet comes in handy. So all those VLAN information we entered when we installed our cluster, we're just putting in the same information for our HX node six. So our VLAN IDs and our IP addresses. So I'll sure just enter those. So VLAN ID is three ten for our management. 
three eleven for the storage, three twelve for the motion, and three thirteen for our user network. Now our map pool uh, prefix. So currently we're using eleven, so we can carry on using eleven. It's just a unique identifier uh, for our MAC addresses in our UCS domain, and you can see there the the, the format is going to use our MAC addresses. So I'm using 11 already, so this will just uh, carry on uh, from uh, 11. Okay, so our CIMC pool. Again, if we want to have a look at our current pool in UCS, we would go to our uh, LAN, go down to our um, pools, go into our Hyperlex external management pool. So you can see there the pool that we created uh, when we installed this. We only needed five addresses. Um, again, the pool we're being asked for now in the installer cannot overlap with this pool. So if you used a you know a whole class C, most of which are free, you won't be able to reference that um, IP pool again because it will say there's an overlap. Um, so what I tend to do is only uh, use the addresses that I need uh, at a time. So for example, this is now this is a class C, a 24-bit mask, but I only created a pool that had five addresses in it. So I'm now going to just going to add one address to that pool. So we're going to add in the 176 address. So that won't overlap. Um, if for whatever reason it does overlap, what you can do is just <laughs> delete that range and then recreate it just with the, the ones you're using. And then when you add in your new address, it won't overlap anymore. You can tell I've I had to do that previously when I when I've extended this previous uh, cluster. Okay, so we want just a single IP address in this, so it'd be one seven six. So again, if I was adding multiple nodes at the same time, I'll just make sure that is enough addresses to cover all my CIMCs, and my gateway is two forty. Uh, not using any iSCSI or FC. Uh, select our UCS firmware management. Again, that needs to match uh, what you're currently using in your UCS environment. So the two versions I've got there, but the version I need is 3.23a. And again, if you're unsure, you can just pop back into your UCS, go in your equipment tab, and have a look at your firmware management, and it will tell you what version you're running. Three two three eight. So that's the version we're selecting in our installer. Okay, so we shall continue. That org name there is the org name it will create in UCS. But again, that's already created. We did we created that as part of our cluster install. So we can progress. Okay, so this will be for our new um, hypervisor node. So we'll use our standard class C mask two five five two five five. Two five five. Gateway will be again in our spreadsheet. So this will be our ESXi management subnet. So in my case, that is the one three zero dot zero dot ten dot two five four, which is our gateway on the RACI fabric here. So again, it's that network there we're talking about. So zero dot ten. So it's the inbound management network. There's our gateway, so I'll put that in. Our DNS servers is our AD here, which is 172.22.140.101. So again, make sure that your new node is has got an A record in that DNS server. Otherwise, you, you might find this wizard will fail. If any of these names can't be resolved, you, you'll, you'll probably get a failure. Um, Okay, so static IP address. Will be our next one in line. So be this address here. For our VMK on our hypervisor. Which will be 130.0.10.254. And our next name is H X node six. Okay, I think 
that is all we need to do there. Again, you can just check that this is being populated as we go. Oh, need a dot zero on the end there. Okay. So this is where we now need to put in all these other IP addresses. Again, just refer to your spreadsheet. And it's these addresses here we're now going to put in. Again, so these are the hypervisor are VM kernels and the storage controller IP address. The storage controller VM, uh, which is the software defined uh, VM which controls all the storage cluster, has a leg in each of those networks. Okay, our current storage uh, controller VM, which is our HX Connect, our cluster, so that's our password there. Okay, we don't want to do clean up disk partitions. This is a fresh factory install, so the partitions will be um, as we would need them. Um, I think you'd tick that if this was a, a manually prepared uh, host rather than just a one of the, uh, from factory. Okay, and we're at, okay. If you wanted to add more uh, servers here, you could use these buttons here for the compute only node or another converged node. But I think we are there. Okay, so this should now go through a big validation and workflow. I'll probably just pause the video while this is going on. This could take a couple of minutes. Okay, in fact, while we're watching, I can actually see some of this going on in the background. So this is now uh, using Ansible in the back end to log into the Fabric Interconnect. So we can actually probably go in to the Fabric Interconnect and see what's happening. So let's have a look at our servers. Okay, so we've got some activities going on. Okay, so things will be going on, so we can go and check that management pool, for example. So we can see that 176 has been created, it has not yet been assigned. Let's have a look, see if we've got our service profile created for us yet. So there is actually a an updating template that was created uh, when the Hyperflex cluster was installed. So again, this was created by the the installer wizard. So it will just create another service profile from that updating template. So again, that hasn't happened yet but we should probably see another one pop in in fact it looks like it's at that stage now configure service profile uh, from the template so again it's always nice, nice just to have a look on the, the back-end element manager to see all this stuff being created for you Oh, 
There we go. So there's our service profile just being created and it's currently being associated to our new Hyperflex node. So again, if we had a look on our external measurement pool now, we've actually seen that that's now been associated to Hyperflex node 6. Okay, so that's just associating. I'll probably take a, a couple of minutes. And again, what we could even do is actually have a look at the KVM and actually see what's going on actually on that Hyperflex node as it's as it boots up. Far our wizards got through now. Okay. Yeah, so it's just at the associating service profile stage. So that'll go green, has and when that's associated. So again, if we can have a look at our KVM, so it's just going through some reboots at the moment. Again, not that you need to look at any of this stuff behind the scenes, but it's just nice to show you what's going on rather than just looking at a big long list of little tick boxes. Okay, so we'll give that a few minutes. So I'll just pause the video while that's still going on and I'll resume when it's changed. Okay, so it looks like our service profile is now associated. Let's move on to waiting for the ESX login. So again, we can just check UCS Manager. Yep, so our service profile is associated. Have a look at our KVM, so it's just booting up now, so that should boot to ESXi. Okay, so it's just booting up ESXi now. Okay, so it's just moved on in the workflow. Now to hypervisor configurations. If I have a quick look at our KVM, so it's now given it our correct IP address, our dot six. Let's see if that's online yet. Yep, so that host is now online. Okay, so I've got uh, an issue here. <coughs> Pipex node is configured with a VMware Foundation license. That must be upgraded before continuing. Ah. Okay, I'll tell you what that is, is that since this Hyperflex cluster has been in, it's had a new license attached um, and the license that you get by default I think is only a, a foundation license and this has got a an enterprise license on it so what I'll need to do is just change that license to match the one we are using currently in the cluster so let me just do that so that has failed so what I can quickly do is 
going to our node directly. Let's still, I'll still use the fat client because it's um, ESX6. And I want to go to root. Okay, that's better, that's the node I want. Okay, so I'm going to license features. Yeah, so that's currently it, so it's the foundation license. Let's replace that. that one. Okay, so, so now we're running enterprise license on this node. So now if I retry deploy validation. Yeah, that's still all the same. Let's just re-kick off that section. Now hopefully it should pass our license check. Again, this will take a couple of minutes, so I'll just pull. Okay, so it's passed all those checks, and it's, got, it's moved on to the next stage, which is deploying the storage VM. So again, I think I've still got our client open to node 6. So there's the storage VM that's just been deployed. So again, we can see various tasks kicking off in ESX. is adding the virtual switches, creating the storage VM and powering on. So again this will take a few minutes. Okay, so let's just move on to configuring the storage node. So now I'll be logging into that storage VM and joining the existing storage cluster. Okay, so again, this is going to take a few minutes, so I shall pause the video and I'll resume as soon as there's something new to show you. Okay, so that's been about 10 minutes, and that's now returned to the um, summary screen of our Hyperflex installer. And we can now see that we have our sixth node. So 
So there's our completed workflow all the way through. So let's go and have a quick look what's happened in vCenter. So we now have our sixth node in the cluster. We've got a little warning triangle next to it. Uh, which as per last time is the you know little warning that our shell is enabled, SSH is enabled and our system logs are on uh, non persistent storage. Um, so if you remember last time we actually run a little post install script on our um, install a VM to clear those, uh, which we still can do. Um, so we can just do that. So, and also if we have a look at our node 6, which is our new node, we have a look at our networking of our new node. We should see our virtual switches are there. Okay, but vMotion has not been configured. The uh, v switch is there, but there's no uplinks associated with it. All the other ports should be okay. So there's our user network. Our inbound management. Our vMotion network, so again, no NICs are associated to those. Our storage network is done. So again, to configure vMotion or our um, user network, we actually need to rerun that script, or we could configure it here via the element manager. Just add in our VM kernels, and for that port group, specify which NICs are being used. So we shall do it via our Hyperflex post install script. Okay, so it's just little, just logged into our installer VM. So if we do post underscore install, so our password for our Hyperflex controller VM, which is the same one we use for HX Connect. Let's just think about it. So, so this is a optional uh, step. So, present it. So. Uh, Local. Okay, so it's found our data center and found our cluster. Do we, we do want an entire key? That's already done. We don't want to enable DRS, it was already enabled. Disable SSH warning, yes, we do want to do that. So, again, that will do it for all hosts, even though it's just the last one that we actually want it to be done. Add the motion interface. So we'll say yes. So when I say this is an optional step, as we saw before, the the vMotion network has not been set up for our latest host, our, the host we've expanded. And if that was 10 hosts, we could come in via the, the post install script and add all that in in one go. Um, this is just one host, so it'd actually be a lot quicker for me just to add that vMotion VM kernel in just manually in vCenter, just you know, just through standard procedures, and then map the relevant um, to vNix uh, to that uh, uh, logical switch, uh, that uh, virtual switch. Um, so, whatever you prefer. Uh, so we are going to use the uh, the Poston script to do it this time. So two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. And vMotion is three on two. 
So you'll see there it's actually asking us for the vMotion interface for node 1. Now node 1 is actually already set. So unfortunately I can't skip it. So I'll just do node 1 which is that it's 12 tops. One looking at my spreadsheet. And I can just use my up arrow and go through the rest of the host. So node 2. Node 3. Node 4. Node 5. And then the actual one we want to do. Node Six. So you can imagine if you was adding ten nodes in, you know, it'd probably be a bit quicker doing it this way. Um, certainly, if you're adding new VLANs, the post install script is quite a nice way of doing it because that creates the VLANs in UCS for you, adds them to the uh, VNIC um, profiles um, via the updating template, so it does all that for you. So I'm going to say no in this instance. I'm not adding any new networks. So that is that done. So we can close that. Let's go and have a look in our vCenter now. Okay, so I'm going to see hnode6 has now got a IP address in for the vMotion and is mapped to VM uh, 6 and 7. Um, so post tasks that I'll need to do now, if I have a look at one of my existing nodes, you'll see I've actually got a DVS there, a distributed virtual switch. with my Phoenix 4 and 5 that currently isn't on my new host which is still on uh, standard v switches so I'll just need to migrate though that host to my existing DVS um, let's have a quick look in Hyperflex just to make sure our cluster is all okay Admin. Okay. So I can immediately see that our class our capacity has increased. We're now at nine point six terabyte capacity. Okay, so I'm now seeing uh, six nodes and 9.6 terabytes capacity. I do my system information. I should see node six is online. As you can see, there it's got practically nothing on it as m at the moment. Uh, the data hasn't been rebalanced across this node. By default, it will happen uh, every 24 hours. I think at 5:15 a.m. I think. Uh, but I say, if, if you ever want to manually kick off a a, a, a data rebalance. Um, there's a, is a CLI command for it, uh, which should enter. Um, where are we here? So we can do a st CLI. Do a rebalance status. Should say that this not currently data rebalancing, so it's not running. So if I wanted to force that off, I could do a rebalance start and put a force on there, and that would then do a force data redistribution uh, across that additional node. But in this case, I'll just let it sort itself out. Okay, well, I think we have now a functional. Uh, expanded hyperflex cluster. So thanks very much for joining the video and I'll speak to you soon.